The best homemade pectin hinges on this tip. If you are in need of pectin to thicken up your jams, jellies, soup sauces, or puddings, but you want to avoid purchasing the boxed or liquid varieties at the store, no problem. Yeah, that's right. Pectin doesn't have to come from a box. Since pectin is a naturally occurring substance in all fruits, you can make as much or as little as you want as long as you have high pectin fruits such as apples on hand. Purchasing pectin at the store can get quite expensive, which is why I started making my own. And I not only cut cost, but it also gives you an equivalent gel setting product. So in this video, I'm going to take you step-by-step step through a very simple homemade apple pectin recipe. I'll also share some helpful tips so that you can stash and stock your own homemade pectin. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and preserving right at home and share ways to use your home can pantry and recipes your family will love. And if this is not our first time meeting, then you already know it is not an understatement for me to share that I love making jams. I mean, they are just so versatile when it comes to meal prep. I've created a playlist of some of my most popular jam and sauce recipes that I'll put in the description box below. But for now, let's get on to making this homemade apple pectin recipe. But I will pop back here in a couple of minutes to share some of my helpful tips. As always, the full printable recipe is on the blog post and linked below. And over on the blog post, I share topics such as to pectin or not to pectin. I also have a chart I think you'll really like that shows high, medium, and low pectin fruits. I'm an inquisitive canner and home cook. And if you are too, I really think you'll enjoy that post. But in this video, Video, I just wanted to stamp a couple of points so that you feel comfortable about making your own homemade pectin. Start by washing and quartering your apples with the skin on and include the seeds. These parts contain the highest amounts of natural pectin. best homemade pectin hinges on this tip. For this recipe, stick with sour green apples that are so tart. Your first instinct is to resist even wanting to bite them. No half step in here. You want to stick with apples that are known for their bright acidic tang. Granny Smith, Shamrock, Lodi, Red Island Green. Those are the best choice for making homemade pectin. Now it's not that you can't use red apples at all, but if you want the strongest stock, stick with green underripe apples because they have the most amount of pectin. Now I certainly toss in the cores and the skins from red apples, but the ratio of green to red apples is about 80-20. Lots of green is the way to go if you want to avoid troubleshooting pectin problems. Usually I have frozen red apple scraps on hand, but I had recently purchased these reducer cook cell apples, so I use them instead. Place the apples into your preserving pot and cover with just enough water to float the apples. Too much water will dilute the pectin. Cover and bring to a boil over medium to high heat. Once a boil is reached, reduce the heat and cook at a low simmer for two to two and a half hours. An easy mistake you must avoid is stirring your apples. This eliminates sediment fallout, which will give your product an undesirable haze and make it hard to strain. When the apples have cooked down considerably and are incredibly mushy and resemble chunky applesauce, line a colander with several layers of cheesecloth or you can use coffee liners and even a tea towel. You'll stack the colanders over a large pot and strain the liquid through it. You're going to let things drip for several hours and up to overnight at room temperature. You'll again have to resist the temptation to press the pulp so that you don't get cloudy pectin. Here you see me using a second colander without cheesecloth to capture the initial runoff before transferring to the lined overnight pot. The next morning, voila, what's drained through the cloth is your pectin. Return the pectin to the stove and bring it to a simmer over moderate heat until it reduces by half of its original volume. It's nearly ready, but before you jar it up, test your pectin's ability to gel, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. 
One of the pros when it comes to making your own homemade apple pectin is that you can ditch the store stuff because seasonal apples per pound are always significantly cheaper than the store stuff. Now I am all for having a well-stocked pantry, but stocking your pantry with the commercial box pectin isn't something you wanna do because it has a relatively short shelf life of only one year. Now I love creating something out of nothing. And another benefit of making your own made homemade pectin is that you'll stop tossing out the seeds, the rind and the core from high pectin fruits and instead collect them in a freezer bag. And when you have enough, you can just go ahead and make your own. And admittedly, I am a bit of a stickler when it comes to this expiration date for this particular product because the gelling property of pectin takes a precipitous drop after about eight months. All right, so you may also be wondering, Cassandra, what are the downsides of making your own homemade pectin? I've been making my own homemade pectin for a while and I can only think of two. The first is that for whatever reason, your homemade pectin may give you a set that's a little bit too soft or too firm. But even with this possibility, Possibility, I still prefer to make my own homemade pectin. Look, the jars of jams and jellies and spreads that I use are not being entered into the state fair contest. And I'm not chasing after something that looks like highly edited food photography. In our house, it is taste first, aesthetics later, and we are still very happy with occasional batches of slouchy jam. And if you're gonna use your homemade pectin to make jam, think about this. You are probably using your jam to spread on toast or biscuits or as a glaze on meat. Sometimes I even toss a bit of my jams into smoothies or in thumbprint cookies. And you know what? None of that hinges on having the perfect set to be enjoyed. So yes, I will risk occasional inconsistent jelling so that I can have product independence from big box brands because I instead can source a product from whole fruits that I'm already purchasing. The second drawback would be that you have to give yourself 24 hours in advance to make homemade pectin. And that's start to finish time, darling. Your hands on time is only about an hour. Remove one teaspoon of pectin and allow it to cool. Mix with one tablespoon of rubbing alcohol. Your fruit pectin is high for gelatinous glob forms that can be picked up with a fork. If your fruit pectin is average, you'll get a few coagulated chunks. If that's the case, return the liquid to a boil and continue to reduce, discard the test batch. Pour your hot pectin immediately into sterilized half pint mason jars, leaving a quarter inch of headspace. Wipe the rim of the jars with a damp and clean towel to remove any residue that may prevent your jars from creating an airtight seal. Apply new canning lids and firmly, but not forcefully, secure the screw band to hold the lid flat in place. Line the bottom of your pot with a jar rack and submerge the jars with a half inch to one inch of water and process in a boiling water bath for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, remove the jars from the boiling water bath and allow to rest for at least eight and up to 12 hours. After this, you can confirm the jars have sealed by tapping on them. A secure lid will not pop back up when pressed. Homemade pectin is shelf stable for one year, but for best gelling results, use within eight months. This is a recipe you'll need to use up during one canning season. Don't forget to sign up to receive free canning recipe videos delivered straight to your inbox. Until next time, take good care. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon.